I'm Ursula de Castro, creative director at From Somewhere and We Came to Wear, founder of Aesthetica and co-founder of Fashion Revolution. So Tomorrow has done a couple pieces this year on both shipping containers and the possibilities of textile economies. Um, just behind you is the Style Mile in Glasgow, which is something that you know, there's a lot of fast fashion stores and brands. Um, what's the key to getting consumers to move away from those fast fashion brands and consider something different? We need to inform the consumer and educate them and make them understand that the way that the system works right now is simply not sustainable. We need to get them to start questioning who makes their clothes, literally who makes the clothes, the person. Because somehow with the entirety of the textile and fashion industry having been removed so far away, it's almost as if we can't see the problem. And there is a massive problem. Rana Plaza is but a catalyst for change, I hope. And at least with Fashion Revolution Day, we are hoping to re-engage the consumer, to ask questions and really, truly demand the brands, who made my clothes? And start finding a solution one step at a time. I mean, a lot of people depend on the jobs in retail for clothing and, and also the, the shipping. There's a lot of different parts tied into that economy currently. So how can we change it and still ensure that there are jobs for those people? Or, or how do we find new ways of, of employing people? Um, because obviously if you have a piece of clothing that's going to last 10 years instead of 6 months, then you only need to buy it once instead of... But it's going to cost an awful lot more to make. And so if the person who is making it is being paid correctly the right wage for their time, not only are we rewarding them for a work well done, but we're also skilling them and teaching them how to make something perhaps from scratch, from beginning to end, rather than just sew endless sleeves or buttons or buttonholes. So we've done, you know, we've taken an economy and of course we are employing an enormous amount of particularly women, but we're exploiting them at the same time. So we need to rebalance those questions and, and start looking at different way of employing people in a way that it's more considerate. Why do you think people don't ask enough where their clothing or where things that they buy come from? I think it's two reasons. Cultural, I mean, we have been removed from the people who make their clothes. When there was an industry, for instance, in Europe, everyone knew somebody that made clothes, whether it was your next door neighbor or your aunt. Or, and ever since this has been so far away, we don't. So we've lost respect for clothes making because we don't see it done any longer. And the other reason is that we are very spoiled. So we don't really want to ask those questions. We want to be able to buy whenever we want to rather than because we need to. So right now, um, I think a lot of the movement towards sustainable um, solutions in the fashion industry is precisely that of creating those connections, making sure that people understand that actually clothes don't grow on trees. There is a cotton farmer that farms the cotton, there is a mill dyer that dyes the fabric, there is a weaver, there is a maker, and quite rightly, as you say, there is the person that transports them to our stores. I mean, the fashion industry encompasses so many other industries that until we start to introduce the concept of transparency and traceability, and until we start making that concept sexy and exciting and worth looking for, uh, that will be the point that we will achieve some change. Just finally, we're coming up to obviously the holiday season. Um, what if you had consumers ask one question when they're buying gifts for for people or, or considering buying clothes for people? What what would that question be? I don't think it is ever a question of one question. I mean, you know, one question will always be too limited. You have to ask quite a lot, actually. You have to ask, do I want this? Is this going to last? And if you don't want it, who else is going to want it after you? You know, when you're buying something, um, consider the first person that you're buying it for, and then perhaps the second, the person that the person that you're buying it for will pass it along to, and then start questioning, what's it made of? And is this good? Is this the right thing to buy? Um, again, it's not a simple situation, and therefore there is not a simple solution, which is why I think the key factor is to explain to the consumer that there are a lot of questions to be asked and they all need asking and the brands have a responsibility to start giving us those answers.